Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. Today we are having a look at the first Israeli ground vehicle deblog, and all I can say is I hope it improves from here. We have the Zaklam M3 Tega, and this is an ATGM launcher, which uh, looks absolutely awful. But hey ho, it's rank 5, uh, so it's not... Uh, going to be the bottom rank, I don't think, uh, for Israel. So I'm guessing there'll be some stuff which uh, comes in ahead of that. And uh, overall, at least it's looking like an interesting vehicle design, kind of mishmashing two ideas that we've seen from other nations in the past in the form of the SS-11 missiles and also, of course, the American half-tracks on the M3 and the M5. I'm hoping that we don't get two versions of this thing and we can just forget about it once it gets added to the game. Let's look at the history of this vehicle. After the creation of the Israeli state after the Second World War, its armed forces began being supplied by its allied countries, and among the equipment provided to Israel were variants of the American M3 half-track. And at the start of the 1960s, however, Israel also acquired a number of French SS-11 missiles, uh, which were known as Tagers in Israeli service. In order to equip its first units with the new technology and train maintenance specialists with them, Around the same time, Israeli engineers modified some of the M3 half-tracks, which were in service as APCs with the military, and they modified them in order to enable them to carry the newly acquired SS-11 missiles and effectively convert the vehicle into a missile carrier. Being officially commissioned into service with the IDF in 1962, the vehicle was first publicly shown during a military parade in April of 1963. In service, the Zaklam missile carrier saw limited combat action as it mostly equipped IDF auxiliary units or those tasked with a defensive role. Nonetheless, the Zaklan M3 participated in the Six-Day War and took part in combat operations in the Sinai Peninsula. The vehicles remained in service with the IDF until 1969 before being officially decommissioned, while the remaining SS-11 missiles retrieved from them were subsequently used up during the Yom Kippur War of 1973. So when it comes to this vehicle, this finally does acknowledge that the Israeli ground tech tree is coming out next update, which is a big positive, you know, and uh, unfortunately it has to come through this article, but at least now it is fully confirmed. The M3 Tega being, of course, the first uh, vehicle shown us uh, in the Israeli tech tree. Now, it'll probably follow the same ideas as the Israeli aviation tech tree, starting at a high rank, and then you'll probably have to unlock uh, other stuff in, you know, other tech trees to be able to uh, go through it. Another thing to also mention is Israel will have a CBT as usual when it comes to these things, and you will have to buy a pack if you want to get access to it on day one. So either the M51 or of course the Macava that's on offer. Another thing to also mention is uh, the Magak 3, the Shot Cal Dalet, and also the H64A per 10 will be removed or discontinued uh, when the start of the Israeli Ground Forces CBT begins. So if you are interested in those vehicles, it is best to pick them up now um, because they will, be, uh, re they will be being removed. And if you want a 3% off in my decal, you can also use my code for it. So when it comes to the actual M3 Tager itself, War Thunder has a constant thing where they over tier and over, sorry, over BR these vehicles. Uh, so this will probably be a much higher BR than it needs to be, and it will be completely useless. With the changes to how missiles work uh, in the game, the SS-11, especially arced ones, uh, have become harder to use. A great example of this is the swing fire. The swing fire being a vehicle which fires its missile upwards and then it has to arc downwards. Uh, with SS-11s, because they have even worse tracking as, uh, than something like the swing fires missiles, it'll end 
up where you have to be miles away from your targets when it comes to your arc to be able to hit it. In certain situations, this vehicle may be very useful um, because uh, it looks like its optics are slightly higher than its general cabin, so you can sit it behind a hill and then just fire over it. But those opportunities are going to be extremely limited, and also, at the same time, you will be much better serviced with a gun. So hopefully this vehicle has a lineup around it, because if it's by itself, it is going to be absolutely useless. All I hope is that they give this thing scouting, so we will actually have something to do on the battlefield. As somebody who has spaded the vast majority of ATGM carriers in the game, the ones that work either have a really unique mechanic on them, so the Sturm S is pretty good because it has the um, the HE, well it has the proximity missile so you can not just attack ground, you can attack helicopters, but grinding that thing out to get those missiles is an absolute pain. The IT-1 works because it can fire on the move, and also at the same time it actually has armor, so you can survive a shot and all of the others just get annihilated. There's a reason why you don't see a lot of M113 toes on the battlefield. You don't see a lot of CM25s. You always see stuff like Sheridans or M60A2s, because they have more use than just the ATGM. And unfortunately, the Zaklam M3 here, I think, will fall into the uh, useless category. Unfortunately, when it comes to the vehicle itself as well, it uh, has additional mass on it compared to the standard M3 American-based model, and it has the 143 uh, horsepower engine. So it's going to be quite slow going around the place. And remember, the modifications for this thing, it's a rank 5. So it's going to take you a long time to get those mods to be able to increase its mobility while everybody is running around uh, just annihilating you. So I'm really, really hoping that they give this thing scouting. Um, it also carries an additional two SS-11, so you get six in total. Uh, so you probably may be able to kill at most four, maybe five targets if you're insane with them. But remember, the SS-11s are also keyboard guided, so you can't move after you've fired them. Uh, you are stuck there as they go into the target, and also uh, they are not very powerful. They're some of the worst missiles uh, when it comes to the game. Uh, a lot of people are already likening this vehicle to the Type 60 ATM. Um, I, if this thing doesn't get scouting, I think I would prefer to use the Type 60 ATM, because at least it gets scouting under 50 cal. I'm getting really bored of these useless vehicles, and it's also giving a lot of people ideas uh, when it comes to adding stuff like the Burdum with, the, um, with its missiles, which would actually be much more useful uh, than this thing, but at the same time would be a pain to play. These vehicles are not fun. They are just tech tree fillers. They're not unique either. The idea that this is unique when SS-11s exist in other areas of the game and the M3 half-track definitely exists in other areas, it's just not a good thing. You know, it's it's not really a good look in general. For me personally, uh, this, I, I highly doubt anybody's going to play this one. It's a really bad look that the first Israeli vehicle we get is this, especially after the aviation tree that just came out. Um, let's just say I, am, I used to be cautiously optimistic about this tech tree. At the moment, after the announcements, I'm definitely in the pessimistic zone. So hopefully that improves, but right now, it ain't there, Chief. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. I'd just like to thank Merciless Reaper, Jerry Provolt, Mega Dino King, Professor X1718, Orange Tail, Sakoshi Tiger, Teddy, John Ryman, Universe, Eugene's Terry, Ambrosius McClellan, Daniel Stanton, Martinez, Moxie, B. Young, and Derek R. Barine. Lafouche and Samuel Slick for supporting the channel.